The Book of True Life, Teachers of the Divine Master, Teaching 263. Love each other. 1. May the peace of my spirit be in you in this instant of communion, in which my divine light illuminates and encourages your spirit. 2. Blessed are you who dream of a paradise of peace and harmony. 3. Blessed are those who have despised and indifferently viewed the trivialities of the superfluous, the vanities and passions that do no good to man and less to spirit. 4. Blessed are those who have removed the fanatical practices that lead to nothing and have driven away old and erroneous beliefs to embrace the absolute truth, naked and clean. 5. I bless those who renounce the exterior to penetrate into meditation, love and interior peace, because they understand that peace is not given by the world, that you can find it within yourselves. 6. Blessed are you who are not afraid of the truth, nor have you been scandalized by it, because I say that the light will fall like a waterfall on your spirit to quench your thirst for light forever. 7. I spread my mantle of peace over you who, gathered in one place or another, transport yourselves in spirit in search of the Divine Master. When you come to me, pray, pray my disciples, because although you have not seen everything come to pass what I have prophesied to you, you will have to contemplate. 8. Keep on praying that the weight of man's ignorance and also the vanity of those who they call themselves wise, because they have accumulated the knowledge of other men, ignoring what is the truth, the one who reveals himself trying to discover the best way to destroy, to dominate, to annihilate, but the one who rises to be able to create, to harmonize the life of beings, inspired by the love of the God of all creation and in love for all creatures. 9. I tell you, disciples, do not seek the truth in lies, that you seek the truth in a humble spirit, in the heart lifted by the love of his fellow men, in the simplicity and purity of life. 10. In wisdom is the balm and consolation that your heart yearns for, that is why I promised you at that time the spirit of truth as spirit of consolation. 11. But it is essential to have faith so as not to stop along the way or feel fear in the face of trials. 12. Faith is like a beacon that illuminates your path until you reach the safe harbor of eternity. 13. It cannot be faith that of those lukewarm and fearful spirits that today advance a step and tomorrow go back, who do not want to fight with their own pain, trusting in the triumph of the Spirit solely because of the Father's charity. 14. Faith is that which the Spirit feels that, knowing that God is in it, loves its Lord and enjoys feeling Him within itself and loving His brothers. That faith in the Father's justice is so great that He does not wait for His fellow men to say Amen. That forgives offenses and mistakes but that tomorrow will be full of light because with its merits it reached its purification. 15. He who has faith has peace, has love and contains goodness. 16. That one is rich in spirit and even in matter, but with true wealth, not with that which you conceive. 17. Men flee in anguish from misery, and in their horror they fall back into their abysses and straits. They do not think of ways to save themselves from those clutches. But the one who flees from the misery of the world is an egotist who it overwhelms, sinks, destroys and loses everyone who crosses its path. He only thinks of himself, his only ideal and end, its security and its conservation. The others are not his brothers, they are all strangers to him. He has no faith he does not know that light, he does not trust the truth because he has not wanted to know it. 18. But what have you done, humanity, of those men that I have sent you to remind you of my way, the way of faith which is that of wisdom, love and peace? 19. You did not want to know anything about their messages, fighting them with the hypocritical faith that you have for your theories and religions. 20. Your eyes did not want to contemplate the light that as a message of love each one of my messengers, whatever you call them prophets, seers, enlightened, doctors, philosophers, scientists, or shepherds. 21. Those men have shown and you have not wanted to see their light. They have gone before you and you have not wanted to follow. They left you the example of the path of sacrifice, pain, charity, and you were afraid to imitate them, without knowing that the pain of those who follow me is the joy of the Spirit, 
it is a path of flowers and a full horizon of promises. 22. They did not come to breathe in the aroma of the flowers of the earth, nor to get drunk on the fleeting pleasures of the world, because the aspiration of his spirit was no longer towards the impure, but towards the higher. 23. They suffered, but did not seek to be comforted, because they knew they had come to comfort, did not expect nothing in the world, because they were waiting for after the fight, the joy of contemplating the resurrection to the faith and the life of the spirits, of all those who had died to the truth. 24. Who are these beings I am talking about? I tell you, it is about all those who have brought you messages of light, love, hope, health, faith, salvation. It doesn't matter what name they had or the path where you have seen them appear, nor the title that they have held on earth. 25. Like them, you can also imitating the great examples that I give you through my envoys on every step. But, do not take as a pretext the incomprehension of humanity towards your works. Don't say that those who brought you messages of love only sowed and have never reaped. No, people, the harvest of the Spirit does not rise soon. If you bear in mind that the flesh is sterile land that must be fertilized continuously with love until it bears fruit. 26. What do you want me to tell you about your wise men of today, those who provoke nature and defy forces and the elements making the good appear as if it were bad? They will have great pain for cutting and eating a green fruit of the tree of knowledge, a fruit that only with love could have ripened. 27. Only my love can save you. See that in men there is not even a trace of love. Pray, but with true faith in the power of prayer, with a faith so great that it surpasses the force of arms with which your brothers fight in life and destroy the peace of their fellow men. 28. You who have removed from your eyes those forms and images that you used to pray in the past, you can practice true prayer because you no longer limit God in an old man, nor do you let imagination give human form to what has no form because it is divine. 29. When your matter stays on earth and your spirit rises to the celestial abodes, when you go through what you call death and rise up in eternity, you will understand how many false images formed your mind and then you will feel the lie depart from your spirit, as if it were a bandage that comes off the eyes allowing them to contemplate the light of truth. 30. How many also hope to reach the height of heaven to meet Mary, whom they always imagined in the human form of the woman who was in the world, mother of Christ as man, and who represent as reign on a throne, beautiful and powerful, but I tell you, do not continue to shape the divine in your mind. Mary, your spiritual mother, exists, but she is not in the form of a woman or no other way. She is the holy and sweet tenderness whose charity extends into infinity. She reigns in the spirits and her reign is that of humility, charity, and purity. But she has no throne, as they imagine. It is beautiful, but with a beauty that you cannot express or imagine with the most beautiful face. Its beauty is heavenly and the heavenly so far you will not be able to understand. 31. I tell you that if you want to get a little closer to the truth and begin to be enraptured in its contemplation, persist in removing from your eyes and your mind how many forms you had created trying to give shape to the divine. 32. When you begin to understand that the divine master has much to teach and correct, you will let my truth penetrate your mind and then you will see how a new horizon appears before your spirit, offering you fields, valleys, roads and mountains where to travel to learn, to know and elevate spiritually. 33. My light is in all the consciences, you are already in the time in which my spirit has to be poured out on men. For this reason I tell you, that soon you will all feel my presence, the wise as well as the ignorant, the great as the small, the powerful as the poor. 34. Both will shudder at the truth of the living and true God. 35. Here you have a new lesson, disciples, so that you can meditate deeply on her. Understand that I have not come just to make you hear words that delight your ears or caress your heart. Understand that my purpose of teacher is to separate yourselves from darkness to show you the light of truth. 36. I am the eternal light, peace and happiness and since you are my children, 
I want and must make you partakers of my glory and for that I teach you the law as the path that leads the spirit to the heights of that kingdom. 37. The opportunities to fulfill and make merits are in each day, in each hour, do not let them pass, do not let them leave, because later you will not be able to reach them. Prepare for a good day and I tell you, that at dusk your dream will be calm and peaceful. Live a virtuous life and your spiritual development will be eternal. 38. Beloved disciples, in two forms I have been among men, one in human form and the other in spiritual form, it is already time for you to understand my teachings. 39. Why do you come crying and complaining most of the time? When I was in the world, I did not live between comforts and pleasures, nor did I have a scepter of earthly power. I suffered, I fought, and I did not even deny my pain. That's what I came to take up my cross and fulfill the mission that I voluntarily set for myself. 40. I had to teach you how the spirit that does the Father's will, once its work is completed, takes flight searching for the infinite, leaving down all that is matter to go after the celestial region. 41. Many times in your misery or in your deprivation you ask yourself, why doesn't your Father give you everything you wish, since in your opinion you only want thanks for your own good? And I tell you, that if I gave you what you want and allow you all the joy that you yearn for on earth, it would weigh you down later because you would be convinced of your stagnation. Yes, disciples, having everything you would waste it, you would not take care of it, since it would not have cost you effort or work to get it. On the contrary, when this that you now ask for without deserving it, you obtain it through merits, you will see with how much love you are going to keep it. 42. How long will my word be understood? How long will you let it flourish in your heart and bear fruit in your spirit? Think of me as I think of you, who is lonely in the world, who is called an orphan. If you prepare, you will not say that you are alone again, because everywhere you will feel my company. Seek the light of my path and you will have nothing to fear. Don't trust the light of science or of human knowledge, because the light of the mind is too little to lead a spirit into the presence of God. 43. Truly I tell you, that what can elevate you is love, because in it there is wisdom, feeling and elevation. Love is a compendium of all the attributes of the divinity and God has lit that flame in every spiritual creature. 44. How many lessons have I given you so that you learn to love? How many opportunities, lives and reincarnations have you provided divine mercy? The lesson has been repeated as many times as necessary until it has been learned. Once completed, there is no reason to be repeated because it cannot be forgotten either. 45. If you learned my lesson soon, you would not have to suffer or cry for mistakes. A being that on earth takes advantage of the lessons received in it, he will be able to return to the world, but it will always be more advanced and in better conditions. Between one life and another you will always have a truce, necessary to meditate and rest before undertaking the new task. 46. Someone in his heart tells me, Father, this truce or rest, is it to send us to seek new fatigue in the world? And until when? 47. Ah, little ones, I forgive your ignorance and I tell you, that I have nothing unjust or imperfect available in the day that you will have to travel. The spirit is tireless, only when it lives in matter does it feel the impression of the fatigue that the body transmits, but returning once again to freedom and spiritual light, he casts off his fatigue and becomes tireless. 48. Be strong before the temptations of the world and of the flesh. Remember my example when you are in the moments of a test. 49. You ask me, how was it possible that Jesus was touched by the temptations of the world? To which I answer, no low temptations were those that touched the heart of your master. 50. The body that I had in the world was human and sensitive. It was the instrument of my spirit to give my lessons to humanity. He knew the test that awaited him because my spirit revealed it to him and that matter suffered from the pain that was waiting. 51. I wanted that body to give you those samples of true humanity so that you would be convinced that my pain was real and my sacrifice as a man true. 52. Had it not been so, 
my sacrifice would have had no merit before men. That is why three times Jesus invoked the force of my spirit, who was the one who encouraged him to win in the ordeal. The first time was in the desert, the second in the Mount of Olives, the third on the cross. 53. It was necessary to become a man and give you my flesh and my blood so that the pain that humanity would infer to him. But if he had come in spirit, what sacrifice would he have made for you? What would there be resigned and what pain could you have made me feel? 54. The Divine Spirit is immortal, pain does not reach him, but the flesh is sensitive to pain, it is limited in its powers, it is mortal by nature, that is why I chose that means to manifest myself to the world and offer my true sacrifice in exchange to teach him the way of his salvation. 55. As long as you are sinners, keep me in that passion and remember that blood, so that, repenting of your faults, purify yourselves in that example of infinite love that I gave you. 56. As long as you are men, remember me on that cross, forgiving, blessing and healing my executioners, so that you, along your hard path, also bless those who offend you and do all the good possible to who would have caused you harm. Whoever acts in this way will be my disciple, and in truth I tell him that his pain will be always brief, because I will make you feel my strength in the moments of your test. 57. Very few are those who yearn to teach their brothers with the examples of the Master. The same among this people that in most religions, teaching is given in words that lack force because they lack confirmation with works and examples. 58. Now you have the opportunity to listen to the explanation of my doctrine, which will polish your heart until it leaves prepared to carry out the mission that I have entrusted to your spirit. 59. Do not be afraid to follow in my footsteps. I will not demand from anyone to equal my sufferings in the world or to carry out in the same way my sacrifice. I must also tell you that only that body drained the cup that my spirit offered it. Another man would not have endured it, because my body took life in virtue and was strengthened in the purity of the one who offered his womb to conceive him, Mary. 60. Meditate, people, and take advantage of this blessed silence that you enter when listening to my teachings. Truly I tell you, that in those moments of recollection and spirituality, my seed germinates in the deepest recesses of your heart. 61. Blessed are you who know how to take advantage of the last times of my communication in this way, knowing that you will not have this grace again. 62. Time of complacency has been that of my manifestation. I have gifted the disinherited, I have raised the defeated in the fight and I have given opportunity to sinners and outcasts. 63. Happy times that will be remembered with nostalgia when they have passed, because although my word has been heard through the speaker, hearts sensed my presence and spirits were filled with my divine essence. 64. Crowd. Always preserve spirituality, which in this blessed hour you show, and may it always be present in your meetings, in the moments of your prayer and in each of your works. 65. Drink this wine, eat this bread until you are satisfied, because my communication will pass since you are in the consummation of this preparation time. 66. The disciple who truly prepares will always have the testimony on his lips and it will be impossible for him to hide the truth that he inherited from his master. The light will be in him and his whole being will be a living testimony of the word and the works that you manifested. 67. Whoever hides my word and the gifts that I have entrusted to him in his heart will not know the joy that he has lost, because sowing, fighting, and even suffering in my lands is pleasure and happiness of the Spirit. 68. The fight does not always have to be easy, there will be days or moments of bitter trials. But even in them, the Spirit will know to respond with humility and love to the will of the Father, being precisely in the midst of that meekness where I will manifest my peace in the good disciples, in the faithful witnesses. 69. Do you think that my second era apostles had a bearable day and an easy fight? No people, they in imitation of their master, they also had their painful path and their calvary. But in the midst of their sufferings their spirit, full of peace, knowing that everything they suffered was out of love for their brothers, in need of truth. 70. If you ask those followers of my teaching, if they had weaknesses or if they felt fear before their persecutors and executioners, they would tell you that not for a single moment did their faith faint, that their trust in the divine power was absolute, 
and that faith managed to be indifferent to losses, mockery, trials, and even death itself. 71. That is the trace that you have before you, the living testimony that it is not impossible for man to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and resemble him in power, in love, in strength, in charity. 72. I do not want to tell you that to be my disciple you necessarily have to endure persecution and agony like that of those martyrs. I give you to understand that in order to love your fellow men you have to renounce the love that you yourselves. Feel that you must forget what is yours at certain times, to think about others, because only immortal works may spring from true love, worthy of standing as examples for others, such as those of the disciples, emissaries of the divine word who, in their eagerness to spread the good news, in their desire to lead the hearts to the light of their master, they gave everything. 73. It was the example that they had received very closely and they tried to imitate it with all the strength of which they were capable. Who of you will come along the path of renunciation, meekness and charity? The way is open, the path waits, on the sides of the road are the lands thirsty for water and hungry for seed. My peace be with you.